And as we pray this morning, participate, knowing that we are not here to watch or worship each other. We are here to worship the true and living God. Our only intent this morning is to have fellowship and to worship the Lord together in the beauty of holiness. We have no other agenda this morning but to lift up the King of all King and the Lord of all Lord this morning. So we declare that on us today will fall the spirit of praise, the spirit of thanksgiving, and a spirit of worship. Go, come on, praise him.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you all the glory this morning. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him the highest praise in the house this morning. Come on. Come on. Make a shout. Hey. We pull down walls. We break chains. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Only you are holy. Come on, tell him, only he's worthy. Only you are worthy. Only you are one. Come on. Therefore, there is no one. There is no one.
Hallelujah. Your presence is heaven to me. Glory to the name of Jesus. Ah, we bow down and we worship you. Mighty, mighty God, mighty man of war, mighty warrior. We bow, we bow, we bow. We bow in your presence this morning, God. Hey, we worship at your throne this morning, God. You alone is worthy. You alone is holy, God. There's none like you. None can be compared to you, Almighty God. There is none like you. We bow before our warrior this morning. We bow before our protector this morning. We bow before our healer this morning. We bow presence of the almighty God this morning we bow down and we worship you hey we move beyond the gates of praise this morning God and we enter into the holy of holies hey where there is worship hey Jesus we want more God. We seek more than the norm. We move beyond the norm, God. Yeah, hallelujah. Jesus, we give you glory this morning. Ah, we enter into your throne room this morning. And we bow. Yeah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there somebody here who wants more? Eh, Jesus. Ah, oh, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. We bow, we bow. We bow to worship. It's not about us, God. It's all about you. You deserve the glory. You deserve glory. You deserve worship. Jesus. It's all about worship. Jesus. We give you glory this morning. We move beyond the veil this morning, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Oh God. Do it again, God. Do it again. Do it again as we worship. Mighty man of war. Oh, a warrior, a lion of We bow in your holy presence this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bow. Mighty man of war. <laughs> Lion of Judah. We bow down. And, and we worship. some situations and some conditions that we need to call the mighty man of war to intervene into this morning. Mighty man of war Lion of Judah We bow down and worship you Sometimes we try, we try and we fight by ourselves. But you need to tell him to come and do God. What only you, the all powerful God, the almighty God, can do. Mighty man of war, Lion of Judah, we bow. to come. Come and do what only you into my family God. Come and do what only you can into my children. Come and do what only you can into my community. Come and do what only you can into my church God. Come and do what only you into the nation, God. Come and do what only you can do. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we give you glory. We give you glory this morning. We give you praise, God. Come and do, God, what only you, only you, the Almighty God, only you, the all-powerful God. 
God, the omnipotent God, the omnipresent God, ah, the one who sits high and looks low, the one who heals, the one who delivers, the one you are this morning tuning in watching this morning I, I, I declare the peace of God over the nations of Jamaica and the entire world this morning this morning as this lump of clay standing before you and every time I would look at myself where I'm coming from to where I am now I have to give God thanks because you may not understand some of you may hear I testify this but maybe the world at large don't know but this is this was a man you are now looking at that used to call ranking slapness you used to stand around the microphone DJ and all kind of slapness but I'm glad for salvation for the grace of God that appeared to me teaching me to deny ungodliness that I should live soberly righteously in this present world I thank God for saving grace I thank God for making a difference this morning Morning in my life this morning I give greetings also to my wife because of the, the COVID she's at home not able to hear this morning but I give God thanks for her a woman who stand beside me who stand with me who cares for me and I give God thanks for her this morning I want to bring you a word let me say, I prepared two words, <laughs> but I can only give you one this morning. And I hope and trust that you will open your hearts to receive the word. My topic to us this morning, perseverance through difficult times if never a time we need to have perseverance it is now because COVID-19 as it is so called is reaping havoc all over the world and there's in this time that some may get faithless and said, God, where are you? But I'm encouraging you, my brethren, my brothers, my sisters, that you need to persevere. To persevere means continuing in a course of action, even in the face of difficulty. I implore the church this morning to stand fast therefore in the liberty where Christ had made us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. You see, when things are being difficult, when things get tough, when the road gets stuffed, you see, there's only one way out. Because the Bible said we should look up because our redemption draweth near. Our redemption is nearer than we think. And so, when we are faced with difficulties, you see, we have to understand that this that we are going through now it is just temporary it is a season pastor it is like oh you have the mango season the breadfruit season but every fruit tree there's a season but I can say to us this too will pass I said this too will pass 
only one thing I can tell you that the foundation of God standeth sure. So we have to stand in the face of difficulty. He said, or oh, with little or no indication of success. Sometimes we are going through difficulties. And it seems that there is no way out. We cry. We pray. We fast. But sometimes it seems that God is not where we are. It seems like God is not hearing us. I hear Jeremiah when he was cast into the dungeon. Jeremiah was thrown into the pit. He used to be fed up on bread and water. Jeremiah was persecuted. Jeremiah faced difficulty. Jeremiah said to himself, I want to give up. I don't think I can go any further. But when the Spirit of God rise upon him, Jeremiah said, I feel like a fire shut up within my bone. Jeremiah realized that in spite of the difficulties that I am facing, that the word of God must be preached. That God's duty must be performed. Let me say to us, my brothers and sisters, that in spite of the challenges that we might face this morning, the work of God must go on. I said the work of God must go on. Whether COVID or not, the work of God must go on this morning. Because I hear the apostle said, I will fight till I die and I never run away. The apostle Paul said, I have fought a good fight. Oh, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Oh, what thing what we are we, we, we know Paul said one thing I know I forget forgetting the things that are behind and I and I stress toward the mark of the higher calling of God because Paul was shipwrecked Paul was stoned Paul was beaten but in spite of the difficulty that the apostle went through he all steadfast in his God he believed in his God and he did not give up and even when he was cast into prison the apostle did not wilt under the pressure but he writes some of the most beautiful books that you can think of while he was in prison because what even though the body was in chain but the spirit was not in chain this morning i say to us let us stand in difficult times let us persevere in difficult time. Whether you have food or not, persevere. Whether you have money or not, persevere. Push. I hear somebody say, push. I hear somebody say, push. You know the woman with the issue of blood. She has a need. She was going through difficult time. She spent out almost her living going to doctors, could not get any healing, any remedy. But when she heard about the healing Jesus, when she heard about the deliverer, she said, I think this man can do something. So while she was heading towards the crowd, mighty God, while she was heading, there was a crowd bombarding her, barring her. But she pushed her away because she said, she graphed up her attitude and said, if I could only touch that little thread, that, that, that the, the tail of his garment, the hem of his garment, he didn't have to speak in tongues over me.
He didn't have to lay his hands upon me. But if I could just but touch the hem of his garment, then I know I could be made whole. And she pressed her way. And because she reached out by faith, Jesus said, who touched me? I want you to touch him with your faith this morning. I want you to touch him when it is difficult. It is, it is time to touch him with your faith. Because when you touch him with your faith, he's going to look around. He's going to ask questions. Who touched me? And because of that, the woman was ill. She was made whole. Mighty God of Daniel. This morning, as we look at Acts, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, and as we look at verse 57, it speaks of a former colleague. Deacon Stephen, a man of faith, a man of wisdom, a man being filled with the Holy Ghost. And while he was declaring to the people, while he was preaching his sermon, saying this same Jesus who you have crucified, you nail him to the tree. You kill the prophets. And while Stephen was, what was that, um, rebuking them, was preaching the word to them, the Bible said when they heard the word, they could not take it. They stuffed their ears because they didn't want to hear what Stephen was saying anymore because the word cuts. Because the Bible said the word of God is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-headed sword. It cuts through marrow. It cuts through giants. And it cuts through spirit. And while Stephen was speaking to them, they didn't want to hear. And the Bible said, they cried out with a loud voice. They stuffed their ears and ran at him with one accord. I want us to notice this. You see how the world unite? You see how the world unite to do destructive thing? The Bible said, they with one accord Imagine they was about to stone Stephen to death and everybody linked together in one accord and they, they, they did not even walk. The Bible said they ran towards Stephen. My God. And they stole Stephen as he was calling on God. Let I pause here before I finish the verse this scripture shows that all when you fill with the Holy Ghost from the crown of your head to the tip of your toe that does not say that the enemy can't throw a stone on you that does not say that you cannot be killed because you see we have a perception when some things happen to the child of God, we think they are sin and sin. We think they are backslide and backslide. That is why misfortune uh, befall them. But this was, the Bible said, a man who was filled with wisdom, who was filled with the Holy Ghost. And they stoned Stephen. As he was calling, notice, the man had called upon God. The man had talked to God. But yet, they ran. They, they didn't have any respect or reverence for God. They ran towards the man, the Bible said. My God. And as he was calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Stephen recognized that he now 
is near. This look like death. So Stephen said, Lord, receive my spirit. Lord, receive my spirit. Many of us is going to be killed on the back of field. And that's why the song man said, I am on the back of field for my Lord. I will fight till I die and I will never run away. Never run away. But watch this. But watch this. But watch this. Uh, i glad that we was kneeling down this morning. Watch this. The man was now facing death. But watch this. The Bible said. The Bible said. Then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice. Lord, do not charge, charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. My God, my God, my God, what a man of compassion. What a man of love. My God, imagine a man is stoning you to death. And instead of saying, God, kill them all. Oh God, he said, I'm God, send me the angel to destroy them. Stephen said, Oh God, do not charge them for this sin. Oh, the man was persevering in difficult times. The man was persevering in difficult times. You know, as a result of that, the greatest apostle who we have heard about in the Bible. Can you imagine if Stephen did say, God, charge them. Kill them off. There wouldn't be an apostle Paul. I said there wouldn't be an apostle Paul. Because he was one of them who was holding the clothes while they stoned Stephen to death. I remind you the Bible said not only those that do the hack but those that also have pleasure in it. So Saul was guilty of murder just as the man who threw the stone. Even though he was holding the clothes but he was a murderer. He was guilty of the crime of the death of Stephen. But because of the prior of Stephen, an apostle Paul could be saved. Because of the prior of Stephen in difficult times, apostle Paul could be saved. And so while Stephen was dead and gone, he was on his way to Damascus feeling good, feeling nice that I have done something worthwhile. But guess what? The master stopped him at Damascus Road. He said, Saul, Saul, Saul. He said, who art thou, Lord? He said, I am Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom thou persecuted. He thought that it was Stephen, but he was stoned in Jesus. He was stoned in Jesus. He was stoned in Jesus. He was stoned. Jesus said, it. it is hard for you to kick against the prick. Oh God. And so immediately Saul was blinded for three days. Saul was blinded for three days. They have to lead the powerful man. And he had to go. But before he came, the Lord revealed to his servant that I am sending somebody to you. Somebody who is not worthwhile. Somebody who, who, who is outcast. But I don't want you to see him as an outcast. Uh, I don't want you to see him as an unclean beast. I, I, I want you to see him as somebody whom I have cleansed. Uh, uh, whom I have cleansed. And, and when he went, oh God Almighty. Oh God Almighty. Uh, and he went and the, the prophet prayed for him. Prayed for him. And when he prayed for him. He received, the Bible says, scale fell from his eyes. He received back his eyesight and he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, the same man that we are talking about, he 
was 14 years he suffered in the church of God before they gave him the right and the fellowship because he was such a wretched man that they did not believe in him even though God was using him but Paul persevered through difficult time and at the time came when they gave I think it was he and Barnabas they gave unto them the right and the fellowship and some of us serve three here and we give up. Some of us serve four here and we give up. But Paul, 14 years, not a membership. 14 years, nobody no call you if you do nothing. My God Almighty. But Paul stayed the course. Paul stayed the course in difficult times. Paul stayed the course in difficult times my God and then they gave unto him the right and the fellowship and then Paul was released into full time ministry all over all over all over and many mighty works were done by the apostle Paul this morning we look into the book of Job chapter 1. Another servant of God. A man who the Bible says, he ate evil. Man not like evil none at all. The man would wake up early in the morning. Half a sacrifice unto God. He has seven sons and three daughters the Bible said. And each one would have a turn to make their sacrifice. But Job being a man of faith, love God. The Bible said Job would offer sacrifice on behalf of his children. For it's a prevent you, they might have cursed God in their heart. So just in case, if they curse God in their heart, just in case, hi. Just in case, I want to offer sacrifice for them. Well, look at Job now. While Job was doing that, Mr. Busybody, Mr. Busybody, hop down, hop down, hop down. Let me say to us, the more we climb up in God, the more we offer sacrifices, the higher we get, as one proverb says, the higher the monkey climb, I'm more exposed. The more we go up into God, is the more Satan is inquiring of us. Is the more the devil is targeting us. So he was inquiring because the sons of God came to purify them. Ah, watch this. The devil is not afraid of the presence of God. Satan is not afraid of the presence of God. As some of us think. For while the son of God came to purify himself. In the book of Job 1. Satan also pre present himself. And the Bible said. God said to Satan. Why are you here? Where are you from? He said, I was walking up and down. Seemed like I can't find nobody. He said, So as thou consider my servant Job, then God said, He said, Yes, but because you hedge him about. Watch this. Because you protect him. Yes. For he shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wind shall thou trust. His truth shall be my shield and my butler. Same say, guess what? You see through you cover him. You see through you have the head around him. We can't touch him. But you see if you give me a little permission. This man where you say persevere. I ain't going to curse you to your face. So God said, watch this. All right. 
have your way but don't touch the body and you can read in the book of Job one calamity after another destruction because while the men were tending to the cattle thieves come in and now there were settlers over there thieves and all kind of mishap and if you check it it was about five four to five things one after the other Job did not have time to rest this was no difficult time and by the time Job said Lord God another message come in and by the time Job to say Lord of mercy another message come in can you imagine then Lent and last coming up to the climax when the man thought all right me I, me, I, me I go through persecution now so I have my family now to encourage me my God another message come in and say master while we were we were in the house and we were having our little thing something happened we just feel the place start shake building collapse and everybody dead only I am escaped to come and tell thee what happened my God have done it you see Job was going through difficult time but the Job let go God no Job stay put with God Job hold the confidence in God his wife was going on very well very well Satan go back to conference again and say no sir this a man you know ordinary this a man you know ordinary look what may let happen to him man the richest man in the east take the all their riches and this a man still a talk about God and what kind of man this Lord Jesus go back to God and he say you know what this is true you protect the body me can't touch him when you see if you give me the permission when me done with that the body Lord pastor prevent you ask question about you prevent you the devil ask question about you but guess what guess what God no there's no way that the devil could win God there's no way that the devil could win God because he's an all powerful all knowing all conquering so God said alright take your best shot take your best shot but the life no belongs to you my God almighty when I look at the word Satan struck him with earth most the Bible said Job was sore from his feet from under the bottom can you imagine man can't stand up man can't walk and sore broke out all over the man body man can't lie down man don't know what to do because so the devil said alright I get you where I want you now I get you where I want you but Job stay the course Job stay the course Job said prevent you prevent you if I rub up in the ashes I might find some court brother even if you have to rub up in the ashes sometimes sister even if you have to rub up in the ashes but don't let go your God I said don't let go don't let go your God even if you have to rub up in the ashes Lord Jesus even if you, even if you have to suffer some hungry belly mighty God mighty God you see these are the days when church some of us we know I suffer nothing we want everything highway 2000 we want highway 2000 we we, we, we don't love the country road when we grew up in a country we don't love it the, the road and we ring the foot we buck the tour but let, let me tell us something for us to make it into heaven for us to make it into heaven for the Bible said there were ten virgins five of them were wise and five were foolish the foolish one was on highway 2000 I said the foolish was on highway 2000 everything cooked 
and everything curry. My God. Enjoying themselves. But guess what? At midnight. At midnight. You wonder why the Bible say midnight? Because midnight many people fast asleep. Spiritually speaking. Spiritually speaking. Many of us. We are in the day. But we are in midnight. Because we are, we are sleeping. Like the five foolish virgins. Which took their lamps. Everybody looked like virgin. Everybody look like bridging. But the time came when the tell truth come. Who were the wise one? For everybody looked like they were wise. Everybody dressed alike. Everybody look alike. Like church people. We all look alike. Start the same way. Look the same way. But the master do something. He made the call at midnight, but he never show up. The Bible said the master delayed. So while he delayed, is coming. Everybody start to trim their lamps. And while the lamps were burning, those five noticed something. Light start dim. The light start dim. The, and that is why I know that a man not just backslide one time, so a man not just backslide one time, so little by little, the light start them, start them, go down a little lower, go down a little lower until there's no hile. The fire gone out, the fire gone out. That's why in the olden days, when the fire was on the altar, it could not go out. The priest, the, 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 the Levi has a responsibility to put wood to keep the fire burning. You no matter how long the fire could not go out. Mighty God. So those brethren who was persevering in difficult times. When the master finally turned up, the Bible said they went in with him. And guess what? The door was shut. The door was shut. The door was shut. If that door shut today, which way will it close you? Is it in or is it out? Is it in or is it out? Will it close you out or close you in where you can hear, come in, blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me, you feed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was naked and you closed me. I was in prison and you visited me. Which way? Which way? Which way will? If the door is closed today, or if the door is closed tomorrow, which way will you be in? How will you be out? When I was at school, they used to teach us this. 